So mouth lesions that I will see in my practice, we'll see soft tissue lesions, so lesions of your cheek, your cheeks, your tongue, your, the roof of your mouth, your gums. So patients may notice that they have ulcers or sores. They may notice lumps or bumps. They may notice pigmented or brown spots that develop red lesions or white lesions, just abnormal colorations. You know, they, whenever they look in their mouth, you know, when they're brushing their teeth, or their dentist may identify one of these lesions, or they may have you know, oral pain, burning when they eat spicy or acidic foods, and when they take a look, they may see some, maybe some of these ulcers. So some of the diseases that I will deal with, you know, oral mucosal diseases like erosive lichen planus, which is an inflammatory disease of the mouth, or a mucous membrane pemphigoid, which is an oral autoimmune disease. Either of those can present as something we call disquamative gingivitis, where patients will, will notice that their gums are kind of peeling away and they look red and, they, and they're painful. Lumps and bumps, so they may have just little reactive growths or small tumors that you know, they may develop over time and they'll want to have checked out. And then with the precancerous lesions, patients may notice white you know, plaques, white areas, or red areas, or red and white areas, and those are always concerning to specialists when we see those in the mouth because they may, you know, be the first signs of a potentially cancerous lesion developing. So the chances of those red and white lesions being cancer are pretty low, you know, maybe two to five percent. But the problem is oral cancer you know, they could be oral cancer. Oral cancer doesn't have to look severe. It doesn't have to look overly worrisome. And also, you know, a lot of times with the patients who have a, a you know, chronic history of smoking and alcohol use, you know, they, th these lesions will precede the ultimate oral cancer down the road. So the earlier we identify these, the better, because they typically want to be, we want to remove them to prevent them from developing into oral cancer. Treating with the patients with the, you know, the oral ulcers or sores, once we have a diagnosis, typically we'll treat those with you know, steroids or anti-inflammatories, either with pills or oral rinses or gels or creams and, or maybe even a steroid injection where we deliver the medication into the lesion. And you know, because a lot of these things are inflammatory that your body's immune system kind of reacting abnormally, we can calm that down and we should have you know, resolution of symptomatic relief. However, a lot of these conditions are chronic, so even if we were to you know, make, get them under control, it does require long-term follow-up, and you know, patients may have you know, recurrences or flare-ups, and then we can manage accordingly. And so if a dentist identifies something, I, th I think I'd be a great resource to, you know, as a second opinion or just to confirm the diagnosis. Again, a lot of these conditions are chronic, and so it's great to have someone manage them over time who's trained in it.